Hey guys, I hope you're doing well. Um, here I was going to talk about a certain product that I get asked many questions about while living and traveling in my car, and that is about these real miniature 12 volt refrigerators that literally only plug in to the cigarette outlet of your car. Now, if you're anything like me, then you were probably pretty skeptical about 12 volt fridges when you first heard about them, like I was. Um, when I first saw a 12 volt fridge, I was browsing on Amazon for different uh, tools and different ways to cook in my car and store food in my car because I live and travel in my car. It's a Toyota Prius. I converted it into a camper. I have I have a sleeping platform that I set up in here. I made a video of me giving a tour of this camper. I'll put a link to that video in the description if you want to watch it. So yeah, when I first saw uh, these 12 volt fridges, I immediately brushed them off because I figured that they were some kind of, you know, faulty product. I figured they didn't really work. They weren't real fridges or maybe even a fire hazard or something because, you know, they don't sell these in regular stores like, you know, Walmart or Home Depot or whoever has appliances. So, um, yeah, I was a little... Uh, I was a little skeptical. I brushed it off as, you know, that these weren't, that I wasn't going to get one. But then I started doing tons of research on other people that had car campers, particularly Prius campers. And a lot of them had 12 volt fridges. Truck drivers use these. People use these in their RV. I saw tons of people that were using them and I set, thought to myself, okay, well maybe there is something to these 12 volt fridges. So I did more and more research and... Um, I finally decided that I was going to get one and to be honest here I've had this fridge for eight months and I'm very happy with it and here I'm going to show you different tips and techniques and ways to use it. So yeah and also this is not a thermogenic cooler which is another popular product. They're typically made by Coleman. Um, there's a few other brands that make them. They're, they're also 12 volt things that cool your food but they're not real compressor refrigerators this is a real compressor refrigerator here's the vent for the compressor fridge and there's another vent on the other side so I normally keep the fridge um, behind the passenger seat and I can uh, just reach over and open it like this um, while I'm sitting in the driver's seat and uh, yeah this is this is what kind of stuff I typically keep in here I got like fresh fruit apples um, I got, here's chicken breast, that's some turkey bacon, I got turkey burgers, I keep vegetables, like that's onions and celery and green peppers, more green peppers, I got spinach, um, you know, some cans of sodas, here's some little Lunchable snack things, you know, little dessert, yogurt, pineapple things, or jello, hot dogs, with some, some garlic I keep in there, cheese, um, so I use it like a real fridge, like you can see and um, it has this little LED light, it works great. And I do a lot of cooking and that's what, this is a uh, chicken breast. I cook, I cook a lot of raw food and I store it in here. I'll show you more about that in a second. Okay, so the first thing we'll go over is how to power the fridge at night. That's probably, I imagine that's what people are going to wonder the most. Okay, so I, like I said, I have a hybrid car, a Prius. I can power it at night. I usually don't though, and I'll show you how. Um, but basically, so if you really, really want to power your fridge at night, there are other options. You can get, multi, you can get uh, power stations. Um, like a Jackery power station, a Yeti Goal Zero power station, and there's also um, like off-brand power stations that they sell on Amazon for a little bit cheaper. Um, I had a Jackery, they work great, and uh, a lot of them have 12 volt sockets, and you can plug you can plug it into the 12 volt socket of the Jackery or the, you know the power station overnight and let it run that way. Another method you can do is the one that I do the most and that is simply not power your fridge at night. Now if you're going to do this um, you gotta be really careful because um, I keep my fridge really cold. I usually keep it around 30 degrees like I said and um, when before I go to bed often especially in the summertime I will uh, set my fridge down really low to like 20 degrees for like maybe like 30 minutes 30 to 60 minutes before I go to bed and I'll I'll set it down really low and that will 
make the inside really fr uh, really cold. It won't actually freeze everything because it takes a while for it to get that cold and then to finally you know freeze everything. But I'll set the temperature down to that low and it will get these walls, the insulation. These fridges are very insulated um, and it's got this like metal insulation thing and, I'll, and it will get the inside very cold, you know, the insulation. And as long as you don't open the lid, you know, it will maintain that internal temperature good enough to not cause food to spoil um, overnight. Now, I've done a lot of tests with this, and I have this little uh, thermometer remote. I have this thermometer, and it tells me the inside temperature of the fridge. I put this in there, and it tells me the inside temperature. Um, it tells me the temperature right here on this little gauge, but I don't fully trust that, so I use this thermometer. And um, what I have found is that usually, like during the winter time, it's it, it's usually only like 5 to 10 degrees warmer inside the fridge when I wake up in the morning after it being off all night long. Now in the summertime, it's it's it can get a little bit warmer. In the summertime, it'll be like, like I said, I keep it around 30 degrees in here usually, um, uh, and it's usually about uh, 40 degrees uh, when I wake up in the morning, and that's not enough to cause food to spoil. And um, yeah, when you turn the fridge down that low, for like 30 minutes it's not going to freeze everything like i said it's just going it, you know it'll take a lot longer than that to truly freeze everything and uh it but it'll just get the insulation in the fridge cold enough to maintain that temperature and uh also you don't want to open the fridge when you do that because then you'll, you'll let a lot of the cold air out so you want to keep it closed and um i saw on one video on YouTube where the guy was saying that he would get a down blanket and put it on top of the fridge and around the fridge to help insulate it even more, you know, to keep the cold in there even more. Um, I've never done that and I keep meat and cheese and all kinds of stuff that is prone to spoil and I have never had anything spoil and I, and um, after not powering the fridge at night. And in all honesty, um, during the winter, I. <laughs> This past winter, I didn't even set it down to 20 degrees at night. Um, it just, like I would go to bed, I would set the temperature at like 32, 33, that's, you know, anywhere 30, 32, 33, that's really cold but not cold enough to freeze everything. And I would wake up in the morning and it would be like 36 degrees. Um, like, so, and that was with the fridge being off all night, so I had like absolutely no need to run the fridge at night. Um, but yeah, again, during the summer, you know, it gets warmer a lot quicker during the summer. And then another thing I forgot to say is uh, you can also get an auxiliary battery, like a, a, a second 12 volt battery, like a deep cycle battery, and you could connect it to your 12 volt, the 12 volt battery of your car, and you can, um, you know, put a sp split charge relay connecting from the 12 volt battery to the deep cycle battery so it charges while you're driving. And then just when the car is off, you can power the fridge using that second 12 volt battery, the auxiliary battery. Um, RVs usually do that. That's what RVs, RVs use that kind of battery to power their electronics when the RV is off. And truck drivers. Um, not truck drivers, like uh, tow truck drivers. They use all, those kind of batteries to power, like the 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 equipment they use to tow trucks and you know winches and stuff like that. And also, I was going to say um, this is the cord that it comes with. So it comes with the basic 12 volt cord. Uh, it plugs in right here, and it's cool because it has it has a fuse, and all it has is a 15 amp fuse. So you can see that it really doesn't use much power. 15 amps is like what the headlights of your car use. Like the few, a lot of the fuses under your car's hood are 15 amps. And then it also comes with this. Um, uh, where this adapter where you plug the 12 volt thing in there and you can plug it into a wall and that's good because um, a lot of these power stations like a lot of the cheaper power stations like the smallest Jackery I think it's like the Jackery 160 has a plug where you can has a has a this kind of plug uh, I guess it's AC power or whatever you call it um, but it doesn't have a 12 volt socket so if you have one of the cheaper smaller uh, power stations then you can plug it into that the regular plug socket using using this adapter that the fridge comes with 
and this is the fridge I have. It's made by Set Power. It's not a big brand. Um, they're pretty much like an Amazon only brand, but they're uh, they're really uh, I've been real happy with them. They've answered every email question I've had, and um, one thing did break. This little handle uh, it has a little spring. You can't really see it. It's got like a like under here the way the handle bends like that it's got a two springs and little plastic clips and the plastic clips broke and i emailed them a picture and they mailed me out a new handle immediately and they didn't even make me pay for shipping so yeah sorry if i'm not being fully clear um basically during the winter time i would set my fridge at like 30 degrees um, and I just kept it there like all winter and it would run during the day and then at night time it just stayed cool just fine you know it barely got over that by the time uh, I woke up in the morning and then during summertime is when you really want to turn it down to like 20 degrees you know 30 to 60 minutes before you go to bed to get it cold enough inside to keep the food cold while you're sleeping and then the other thing I forgot to say is um, uh, you the, these fridges go all the way down to zero degrees, or at least mine does, which um, means it can be turned into not just a freezer, but a deep freezer. Um, I don't ever turn it down that cold, um, especially because I don't want to put that much strain on the compressor. But um, yeah, the typically the stuff at the bottom, for some reason, I guess because heat rises, or whatever but the stuff at the bottom is where the stuff that freezes and then the stuff at the top doesn't really ever freeze especially stuff in this little cubby um, so what I do is I will put stuff that I want to be frozen at the bottom like meat if you notice I have all my uh, like my turkey burgers my chicken the chicken breasts and I usually keep the vegetables down there too stuff that I want frozen I keep down at the bottom and it, it usually stays not may, not like 100% frozen, but pretty frozen, you know, probably like 50% frozen. And then the stuff that I don't want frozen, like Cokes, obviously, because a Coke would explode, and uh, like fruit and stuff that's more like fragile, you know, stuff that shouldn't really be frozen, I keep towards the top. So that, that works out good like that. And that way you can basically have a fridge and a freezer at the same time. And the other thing I was going to say is that this is a cheap, uh, one of the cheaper brands of 12 volt fridges. There are many different brands. There are many different uh, price ranges. Um, the nicest fridges are uh, pretty much called Dometic fridges. Those are like really, really high end 12 volt fridges. That's like the, you know, the Mercedes Benz, I guess, of 12 volt fridges. Um, they go all the way up to like $1,400 I've seen for the really nice ones. I don't want to spend that much money on a fridge. I know they're awesome fridges, um, and I know that uh, everyone that has one loves them, but there are definitely cheaper alternatives. Like I said, I paid like 200 or 250 for this one, and it's not as nice as a Dometic. There are a lot of, you know, smaller brands like this one, Set Power, and, uh, the reason I got this one is because it was the cheapest one that I could find that would fit behind this passenger seat right here on the floor and with good reviews, basically. So like $200, $250, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's not perfect. It has a few glitches here and there. Like, for example, the temperature, um, I have it turned off right now, but it, it switched to Celsius somehow. I don't know how that happened. I I, I gotta email them and figure that out. And, and like, you know, the little plastic handle thing broke. Not a big deal. Um, it's not, you know, it's not a, a glorious fridge, but it, it does the job and it works great. Okay, so I put my fridge back where I normally keep it, right there. You can see it behind the passenger seat. Um, and now I'm going to tell you, show you a li few little gadgets that are good to keep, that are good for your fridge, and ways to clean it and stuff like that. So this is the thermometer that I have. Um, I normally keep it Velcroed right up there, right there on that piece of Velcro, and it shows me the temperature inside the car and the temperature inside the fridge. I'll put a link for this in the Amazon description if you want to uh, look at one of those. Um, and then I was gonna show you these things. So these are really good, these Pyrex uh, little storage dishes. They're made of like really high quality glass. They're microwavable and uh, you can put them in the oven and all kinds of stuff. And um, 
these are good for storing leftovers. Like when I cook a meal, like uh, something like chili or hamburger helper or something like that. Um, something that's kind of messy, I store it in there. Um, and you can, and they, they, they stack really well. They, they, they go inside your fridge really well. Um, this is what I had at first. I got this at Ikea. I mean, it's a great little thing. It was like four or five bucks at Ikea. And uh, it's made of really high quality plastic. But the problem with this is it's so awkwardly shaped. When I would set it in my fridge, it would sit in like the center of the fridge and I couldn't fit anything around it. Cause like, you know, it, just the way it's shaped and you know, it, there, there wasn't any room all around it, and it just, you know, it was a pain. It, it wasn't good for the fridge. So finally, after using this for several months, um, I decided to try these, and I like these so much better. And also, um, these wide mouth mason jars. Um, what I use these for is um, when I cook raw food, like raw beans. Like what I'll do, I have an instant pot right here, and I cook lots of raw foods in here, like raw kidney beans, raw lentils, black beans, and I cook chicken in there and all that. When, when I cook a raw food without like seasoning and all that, I will use some of it to make a meal, and then I'll put the leftovers in this jar. And, um, and, uh, yeah, and then this, the reason this is good for your fridge is because the way it's shaped is you can just like put it in the corner and you can, you know, stack all kinds of stuff around it as opposed to something that's shaped like this. It doesn't work very well. I have several of these. Um, this is the only one I'm using. I have chicken breasts that I cooked, leftover chicken breasts that I cooked in there. And uh, yeah, and make sure it has to be the wide mouth because when it has that big mouth, you can get the food out easier and you can clean it easier. You can reach in there and everything else. The, the canning jars that are with the narrow mouth, they're really hard to get the food out and they're really hard to clean and everything else. So yeah, these are really awesome for, for your fridge. And uh, another item, here's a screenshot of it, is these uh, Arm & Hammer baking soda odor absorbers. Um, your 12 volt fridge, I forgot to say this, 12 volt fridges, or at least mine, starts to stink after a while. I hate to say it, but it's true. And um, after I, 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 I was buying raw onions for a while, and one time I cut an onion in half and I used half of it for a meal I was making, and I put the other half in a fridge in the 12 volt, or uh, the other half in a, a Ziploc bag in the fridge, and I put it in that little cubby where the hot dogs were. And Oh my gosh, it started to stink my fridge so bad. Like the first few days, it wasn't too bad. But after like a week, it just got worse and worse and worse. And finally, I just threw the onion away. And now, like several months later, it's really hard to get the smell out. Um, but yeah, uh, one, thi one thing that's really good for cleaning your fridge is vinegar. You, I, I keep vinegar in my car at all times. I use it, it I, I use this, I fill the spray bottle with it, and I clean my dishes with it, uh, and I clean my fridge with it. You want to clean your fridge regularly with vinegar because vinegar is an odor destroyer, it's a disinfectant, and it's a cleaner. All right. Uh, I think I covered everything here. I was just going to show you what it looks like when I'm sitting in the driver's seat um, Where I have the fridge normally I have it behind the passenger seat and I can just pop it open with one hand while I'm sitting here And it wedges against the backrest so it stays open and I can just sit here and grab stuff grab a drink You know grab whatever I need to do and it just stays there really nice. So yeah, thanks I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know if you have any questions and go ahead and subscribe if you want. Thanks. Have a good one